Oh yeah, it's that time. Good evening and welcome in. I'm Andre Johnson with your sports and tonight we kicked off round three of the high school football playoffs. A handful of teams coming into tonight four wins away from hoisting the state championship. And we're going to start with a battle of Miami Valley Giants. It's a rematch between Tip City and Bellbrook. The Golden Eagles knocked off Tip in week one of the season, so Tip is looking for some revenge. But it would be Bellbrook with the early gut punch in this heavyweight slugfest. Seth Burundi on the first carry of the game, stiff-arming a guy into the turf. And there's another one picking up a quick 40. There's a reason he rushed for 2,300 yards this year, guys. Staying on the ground later in the drive, Nick Etienne rumbling up the gut and taking the whole tip team with him into the end zone. The Eagles up early, but on the ensuing tip possession, Liam Peronsky on third down dropping back, but he's dragged down by Gavin Bunsold. Bellbrook dominating the first quarter and a half of this one, but near the end of the second quarter, tip getting rolling. Kate Everhart finding the crease up the middle and picking up 20. And on the very next play, it's his quarterback's turn. Liam Peronsky keeping it. Tip would get to about the 20-yard line, but that drive would stall out. So Bellbrook takes over on offense, but on the first play of the drive, keep an eye on number one for Tip City. Jason Rindler ripping the ball away from Seth Burundi. That's a fumble, and Tip's got the ball back. The rain starting to fall a little harder, but Liam Peronsky doesn't care. He floats that one over the middle to Zach Butera. And that'll tie the game at seven apiece going into halftime. But coming out of that locker room, it was all Bellbrook. The Eagles scoring 31 unanswered to win this one 38 to seven. They'll move on to play Baden in the next round, which is another rematch because Baden beat the Eagles in week two of the season. Now quarterback Brady Uhl and the Piqua Indians hosting the Edgewood Cougars at Wayne High School tonight. Pickle's first offensive drive, they move right down the field and cap it off with this one yard Josiah Medley touchdown. The Indians making it look easy, striking first and they're up seven, nothing. But Edgewood, they answer back. They drive down to the one and give it to their big guy. Number 34, Tavion Crosby. And now we're tied up at seven apiece. Now heading into the second quarter, Edgewood, this time they're at the 11 yard line. They hand it off to Jake Valerio who takes it into the end zone. He finds pay dirt for the Cougars, Edgewood takes their first lead of the night, 14-7. A lot of running going on early on. And once again, Pickwell working their way down to the one yard line, giving it to Medley. It looks like the ball gets knocked out of his hands, but the official says he crossed the end zone before that. So that's gonna be a touchdown for Pickwell. It's a tie game at 14-14. The Cougars now trying to take the lead back and what's the theme of the night? Work it down to the one, give it to the big guy. Edgewood leads now 21-14. But in the fourth quarter, Pickwood trying to make a comeback. So they put it in the hands of Josiah Medley, juking the guy out of his shoes, bouncing it to the outside, and he's got blockers in front of him, finally getting pushed out of bounds at the 20. Indians in the red zone, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just give it right back to Josiah Medley, the reigning Miami Valley League Offensive Player of the Year, scoring the touchdown. And Pickwood would score two touchdowns in the final two minutes of this game to come back and beat Edgewood. They survived the scare and now they move on to play Winton Woods next week in the regional final. Now we go to Eaton. The Eagles taking on Mick Nick at Monroe High School. The Rockets are going to get the ball first, but they won't have it for very long. Pierce Taylor slings it to Tyler Haynes, but it gets punched out. And Eaton's Josh Martin is Johnny on the spot, scooping it up, giving the Eagles great field position. And Brock Ebright's going to make you pay if you turn the ball over. Throwing a dart to Christian Reyna for the 7-0 lead. The Rockets, they've got the ball back, and Pierce Taylor, this time he's just going to keep it for himself to pick up a big game before finally getting pushed out of bounds right around that three-yard line. This time, Taylor's going to swing it over to his guy, Benjamin Bobo, fighting forward, stretching towards the end zone, and he's going to get in. 7-7. Next drive, Eaton, though, wearing the Rockets down with the run game, including that chunk play from Ashton Giot. And those kind of plays sets up Chris Atkins to finish the drive off with that quarterback keeper. Eaton was up at the half, but the Rockets would come back in the second and knock the Eagles out of the playoffs 27 to 14. Now Springfield, they were on the road tonight taking on Finley. They're moving on to the regional final to take on now undefeated Marysville after shutting out the Trojans. The Wildcats have been one of the most dominant teams in the state this year. In the playoffs alone, they have outscored their three opponents 89 to seven. That's seven coming from Northmont. And now moving to the court, the Wright State Raiders lost their first game of the season to Marshall. 
The Herd surviving a career-high 37 points from Raider forward Grant Facilli. Tanner Holden, he was second in the game in scoring, dropping 25, but looking at that scoreboard, it's not hard to tell what the problem was, and that was defense. And in UD Arena, the Flyers women's basketball team taking on Duke. The Dukies edging UD out 70 to 56. Makaira Cook continued her early season hot scoring streak, but the Flyers only mustered four points coming off the bench. And staying with the Flyer theme, the Flyers are gonna take on Davidson in the football senior day on the football field at noon. And then at six, they move over to UD Arena. The basketball team will take on UMass Lowell. So guys, it's just the start of a crazy weekend in sports here in Dayton. I was about to say, just to recap, Springfield, Bellbrook, Piqua, they're moving on. Oh yeah, they're all moving on to next week. We've got more neutral sites games. So we'll see where they play on Sunday and hopefully it will feel a little better than it did tonight. Hopefully it's, not snow, maybe. Sunday will be cold. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Goodness, we just can't we'll, win around we'll here. We'll have some snow around too, so stay warm this oh. weekend. <laughs> All right, Natalie, thanks, and thanks for being with us tonight. We are moving over to ABC 22. We hope you'll join us there.